All right, guys, the day before I flew out to LA for Nair, my TC Electronic finalizer died. Rip. I bought this in 2012, secondhand on eBay for $500, and it worked on over 3,000 projects in this space. And this also means when I got back from LA, I wasn't going to have any A to D converter for my mastering chain. So I needed a replacement. So before I left, I needed to figure something out. And um, mainly this TC finalizer was really good because it allowed me to... Uh, it allowed me to control the input gain, which means I had full control of how hot I was hitting the inputs and how hard I was driving the A to D converter. And that was really good for mastering purposes. But here in Australia, I'm super limited to what's available on short notice. And it was a choice between Antelope Pure 2, the Antelope Amari and the Dangerous Convert AD. And I currently have the Antelope Orion and that's incredible. It's an incredible sounding unit, but I'm not too impressed with Antelope's product support and firmware maintenance for legacy products. So I got quotes on them as a backup, but I was fortunate enough to get my hands on the Dangerous Convert AD+. Now, whilst I was in LA, I actually got to catch up with one of the team members from Dangerous Music at NAMM, and they were super passionate about their product and enthused to talk with me a bit about like all their products, everything, and, and they were just happy and passionate. And I'll be honest, I understand when you're repping a company at the end of the day, a lot of what you do is sales. You're representing your company. But I engaged with dozens of companies over that week, and you can really tell when a team gives a shit about their product and their users. This is important to me as I've gotten gear from many companies and some provide incredible support and care for their end users and others, well, not so much. So... I ended up organizing this while I was over up in the States and the week after I got back, I picked this up, racked it in, and I'm here to talk to you about it. So what does this unit do? Basically, it converts my analog chain to a digital signal which feeds back into my session. And you're probably asking, how does an AD converter work? Well, I'm gonna give you a basic overview of what an AD converter does. So a basic version of what an AD converter does. It takes an analog signal in and that feeds a sample and hold circuit which is controlled by the word clock. And that stabilizes the incoming signal for that sample to a non-changing voltage. And that voltage then feeds into a series of comparators. And those comparators basically say, well, they either turn on or off based on the level of that voltage coming in. And on or off are known as binary zeros and ones go into a circuit which stores those on and off values, those analog values of zeros and ones from the comparator into digital zeros and ones, which then get stored on your computer and actually reproduce those waveforms. The Dangerous AD Plus uses an AKM5394 AD chip, which uses a Delta Sigma modulator and to my understanding is more complex in the arrangement and like most advancements in design, Design, aim to minimize the limitations and potential errors inherent with the process of converting analog to digital audio. So I'm going to leave that rabbit hole for another video, another day when I've learned more about that. But let's get back to the unit. Back to the unit. The unit has the ability to calibrate the signal in two decibel steps. And this is something for myself, which is super critical and we'll hear later on in this video to my mastering chain and basically allows me to drive my converters. And it's a common way I can increase the loudness of a signal before circling back to the digital domain. Now the unit has two inputs. I have one input set up for my mastering chain and a second input I use when I just want to bypass everything in my mastering chain and simply use the transformers in this unit, the Hammond transformers, which we'll go into as well for listening in a moment. There's a clip guard and metering section, which to be honest, I haven't touched in the past two weeks of using this, but something I do enjoy with this unit, like I said, are these Hammond input transformers and I like switching them in to dial color and this is a really unique way to open up the signal if I don't want to get heavy handed with EQ I can just softly roll off the low end and harmonically enrich the mid range and top end without having to do too much to the signal it's just subtle. Now we're going to do some listening tests and I'm going to show you two of the key sonic characteristics of the way I'm using this. The first one as I've discussed is the way I'm able to clip with this by using the calibration mode and the second is how I switch in the Hammond input transformers and use the emphasis knob to open up a sound. Before we get into these listening tests I just want to go over into plugin doctor and I'm just going to change my input here so we can use the hardware. I might mute that so we don't hear those clicks. Um, and basically that is the frequency response of this unit. It's pretty much flat, pretty much flat, little bit of roll off on the bottom. However, when I put these transformers in, the emphasis is all the way down and I'm gonna put the transformer in. We can see we, we, we get a little bit of a, a, a little steeper roll off in the low end and a little boost right up at the top end there. Now this is really cool. As I increase this emphasis knob, 
I'm going to saturate these transforms. I'm going to slightly drive them. We'll see the shape of this, this EQ sort of come to shape. So it's basically just this low shelf. I think it's centered around a hundred Hertz. Let me just pull plug-in doctor up a bit higher. I think it's around a hundred Hertz and down. Yep. So that would be the center point of that, of that, of that low pass filter, not low pass, low shelf, sorry. And it just softly rolls off about two decibels when the emphasis is turned all the way up. But what's really cool about this, if I go to harmonic analysis, I've got a 440 hertz sine wave there. Now what's going on there? I'm coming in pretty hot. Whoops, let's just bring that down. As I drive these inputs, we get those nice little harmonics up high. And if I bring this down to 100 hertz, those harmonics are very present in the low end. So it's as we're putting a low shelf to duck it, we're also thickening it up quite a bit. So I just thought I'd show you that because that's a pretty unique property of this. All right, so the first test I'm gonna show you is clipping. So basically I'm gonna have it calibrated at negative 18, which is what I can have here. And then I'm gonna bump it up to negative 14. So at negative 18, the signal's gonna be right up against the ceiling, not quite clipping yet. Then I'm gonna push it four decibels. Then we're gonna to listen to it against a digital clipper, standard clip doing the exact sort of same thing, but we're gonna A, B and listen to it. So let's have a listen and A, B this. So we're gonna start at negative 18, then I'm gonna bump it up four decibels. Take a listen and I'll even meter this for you. Now what I've got is the digital clipper doing four decibels of clipping and then gaining back up. And we're gonna compare that to the A to D version going into the analog domain and then coming back in and clipping the A to D converter. All right, this is gonna be a very fun test. I actually enjoyed listening to it because there's things I liked about both of them, but I particularly liked about the dangerous. Let's have a listen. <laughs> So the first thing I hear objectively is simply the, the the low end. I feel like the low end in this version going into the analog domain, clipping the A to D is more true to the original. When I'm using the digital clipper, it feels like it's starting to control that low end a little bit too much and tighten it, um, which can be good in some circumstances. But for this, where it's a song sonically, where the textures need to really extend into the lowest register, um, very deeply using the digital clipper compromises that you can hear it tighten up and feel a little bit too constricted. So the next thing we're going to do is put the Hammond transformers in um, and I'm going to turn them on and off. And what you're going to hear is that low end just slightly attenuate that top end, get a little bit richer. And then we'll start dialing this emphasis knob in. All right, let's have a listen. <laughs> Top end opens up a little bit. The low end is a little bit tighter or controlled. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing for this song. I don't think I'd be using this for this song. However, you can hear how it works with the material. What I would like in this song is those harmonics. Um, 
So I got to have the Hammond Transformers in, but listen to how beautiful this song gets in as I dial this emphasis knob up. This is really cool. <laughs> How beautiful is that sizzle up the top? That, that I really like. So all in all, my journey to get this unit, I'm really happy. The calibration means I can, in two decibel steps, drive into the converter, which is great. I've got two analog inputs, one for my mastering chain, one where I just don't want to have my mastering chain in. Um, the Hammond input transformer is, the Hammond transformer is, is really good, especially when I don't want to use an EQ to control the low end, I can just pop that in, it softens it a little bit, it means I have the option of, like we just listened to then, making the top end super rich, and just, it's, it's a really great tone you get out of it. So yeah, that's the Dangerous AD. The team was incredible, um, the build quality is, it's it's absolutely boss mode, feels super luxe. The, the one person I spoke to at Dangerous Music, an absolute gentleman. So yeah, I'll leave you with that. Funnily enough, I'm going to go on holiday for a week. When I get back, I'm going to have another Barry Porter Net EQ, which is actually going into production for retail. Um, I'll probably be one of the first people to get my hands on it to review it and work with it in the studio. It's basically the cousin of the unit I commissioned from High Voltage EQ. They've put a pretty much identical unit out for production. So I really want to put that through the ropes because it's got a few cool tricks and bells and whistles to it. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you for sticking along with this video. I'm going to get into my last few sessions for the day. And until next time, take care.